All right, guys, welcome back to another video. Hope everyone's having a great weekend or at least starting their weekend here this Saturday. If you're first time to the channel, I do make ga daily gaming content. So make sure to hit that subscribe if you like that type of content. And if you've been watching for a while, make sure to subscribe if you haven't been, as I do see a lot of my analytics, lots of returning viewers, but people just haven't hit the subscribe button. Either way, I appreciate the support. But let's jump into this and let's talk about some exclusive news here, or I guess great breaking news, I should say. Uh, from xbox they are losing their corporate vice president or they're changing up the roles as kareem chowdhury is leaving microsoft and they are talking here about how xbox's growth plans accelerate so kareem chowdhury has been around xbox for a while he's been known for doing some of the major things that are at xbox working on where they are now with like things like the cloud as well as he was infamous from that project scorpio video talking about how powerful the xbox one x is or was when it did come out so he is a big part of xbox that is now no longer there so it says here microsoft's gaming org has grown to be one of the biggest contributors to microsoft's overall revenue pie with xbox now outstripping windows itself as one of the biggest drivers of income and that is something it's kind of crazy to think about how big xbox has come within the totality of microsoft when the og xbox started they were just a small piece of the pie and i feel like microsoft looked at it as a risk that they were taking and if it didn't work out it was no problem they could just slash it and cut it out but then they came out with the 360 after that which was very successful xbox one was more of a down generation and now we're back here with the xbox series x and s with a completely different plan for xbox in terms of growing accelerating and as well as expanding out to get as many people as possible into the ecosystem that's grown so big now especially after the abk acquisition it is outstripping Windows as one of the biggest drivers of income. Saying here, it's no small part thanks to the acquisition of ABK, which counts Candy Crush, Sega, World of Warcraft, and Call of Duty among various billion dollar verticals for the gaming organization. To that end, Microsoft has been rapidly evolving how it thinks of gaming today and the Xbox's feature. That also means some leadership changes. And we've already seen a ton of leadership changes at Xbox after the ABK deal did close specifically with the heads, Sarah Bond, Matt Booty getting into different roles. And then you had obviously Bobby Kotick leaving. You saw Mike Yabara leave. And, and there's just been a bunch of change ups here. They say after 26 years, so a long time at Microsoft, Kareem Chowdhury is exiting the company. Chowdhury might be known best to Xbox fans for the quote, it eats monsters for breakfast, speaking specifically of the Xbox Series X there, but also was there in reference to the Xbox One X being a monster. If you go back and you check out that original marketing video for it, it was really well done. It really got people very excited for the Xbox One X, myself included. I actually pre-ordered and got the Project Scorpio edition of the Xbox One X and says here, Indy Kareem was responsible for working on some of Microsoft's most cutting edge projects, including developing xbox backwards compatibility layer which is huge awesome one of my favorite parts of the xbox ecosystem and the series x is being able to pop in discs of the older generation games or go to the store and buy like 360 games and be able to play them i'm still sitting here fingers crossed that they are going to eventually reopen the whole backwards compatibility program and bring more games to it but we will have to see on that they did a decent job i just wish that they didn't close it down. I understand it's about the business side of things with the licensing. So we'll see if they ever decide to jump back into that. It's also worked on Xbox Cloud Gaming and Microsoft's new gaming AI division, which is kicking off right now. I mean, we're seeing it come to fruition. They're working on a chatbot. And then I think we're going to see them actually put a lot of AI tech into their first party games going forward into the future. And the AI division known internally as XM Tech or Xbox's emerging tech team Today is Chowdhury's last day at Microsoft, according to sources familiar with the matter. The XM Tech Org will move into the general Xbox hardware organization, which is led by Rowan Sones. And Sones is famed for her tenure as an OEM expert on the Windows division, helping companies like Dell and HP get the most out of the Windows for their PC manufacturing efforts. Uh, they say here, I spoke to Sones last year at Gamescom, where she made no secret of Microsoft's interest in gaming handhelds, which we've been hearing a lot of rumors on that. And I do hope that is something that does eventually come to version does come out and we get an actual Xbox handheld with a console style UI that gives you access to everything game pass and the games that you have purchased and then potentially give you that option maybe to switch out of that UI and get access to steam or something and play all your PC games on that too. I think that'd be super cool. It says also I'm here. Jason Roddle remains as a tech advisor. So 
he's still there within the Xbox hardware umbrella. Since I've seen some reports to certain places that he was no longer involved in leading the charge for the Xbox hardware. And that's something we did see that was a kind of a, a wrong report where, yes, the Windows Surface team was is helping with the Xbox hardware, but Jason Ronald is still there. He's still advising. He's still giving his input and everything and working on the future of Xbox hardware. So that's good. It says an internal memo described to us. Microsoft noted that moving the AI team underneath the hardware ecosystem will accelerate innovation in that space. Microsoft is known to be working on machine learning tech for improving graphics with direct SR, as well as an Xbox AI chatbox tool to help users solve support queries, both externally and internally that direct SR is going to be, I think, a huge thing for the future of consoles. Same thing on PlayStation with the PSSR, those upscaling technologies. In order to take some of the load off of the console itself, off of the hardware, and still provide steady frame rates, because that's obviously something that's always coming up in discussions with games. It kind of takes away from the excitement for some games when people are always only talking about the frames per second. I mean, we just saw Hellblade 2 and we saw the whole drama around that and people were getting on Hellblade 2 about the 30 FPS and not even talking about how incredible that game did look. The style of game it is, the cinematic style of game it is, it's going to be completely fine in 30 frames per second. That's You can almost guarantee that one, but all of the look at how good that game looked got sidetracked because of 30 FPS. So if they put in this software, helps take the the load off of the actual hardware in the box, give better performance, better frames per second, while all still being able to keep the price of the console at a price that is affordable for the console markets. Because sure, they can release a, a console that is so good that you're getting 60 FPS guaranteed, 4K 60 FPS, but the price of that thing is going to go up, their market becomes smaller, and obviously that's not what they're aiming for. They're aiming with consoles to reach a broader range of consumers. Now, it continues here saying Ashley McKissick and Kevin Gamble are heading up a newly created org named the Xbox Experiences and Platform Teams, which I understand will re-energize investment in polishing the overall Xbox experience across Windows and Xbox consoles, which I think they definitely need that. Make sure that it is essentially one-to-one -one what you're getting on Windows and you're getting on the consoles from the storefront and just the way that these games actually run and function. Because there's still some games that are separate. You have the PC version, you have the Xbox version, and hopefully in the future that all goes away. It's just one version for everything and that Xbox everywhere truly is with every game that they do put out says Catherine Gluckstein, who will now lead the Xbox strategy and regulatory team, owing to her expertise and success in helping Microsoft navigate the regulatory nightmare. That was the Activision blizzard acquisition across the EU, UK, CMA and US FTC. They say additionally, Jennifer Cregan is moving across from Microsoft's wider advertising organization to lead analytics and business planning for the Microsoft gaming team. So a bunch of shakeups there, new teams coming in, and I guess we will see in the future how that affects the output from Xbox. And then finally, Kareem, Kareem Chowdhury, he's being lost, and they say here, losing Kareem Chowdhury is an incredible shame, giving Chowdhury's remarkable contributions to Xbox innovations within gaming. Chowdhury contributed to the Xbox backwards compatibility program, which remains one of the best gaming preservation programs in all of gaming, this side of Windows itself, and I absolutely agree with that. It's one of the main things, as I've said in this video and previous times on my channel, why I was so excited about Xbox this generation, backwards compatibility, game preservation, where you weren't really seeing that done by the other two competitors and platforms out there with PlayStation and with Nintendo. Yeah, PlayStation 5 now has full, or the backwards compatibility with PS4 games, but still nothing there for PS3, nothing for PS2 or PS1. It's only through cloud streaming for their older consoles, which is unfortunate. I would love to see them eventually is with the future iterations of PlayStation give a box where you can play everything on there. Xbox was doing that. And I hope eventually, as I said, does come back. And then you look at Nintendo, they are probably the worst for game preservation, especially on the Nintendo switch where they just give you some games on Nintendo switch online. And then they go out and sue everybody who tries to emulate games where they, you can't access them any other way. So it's a stark difference between the three platforms. 
And it says here, he was also instrumental in building Xbox Cloud Gaming, which has been a big growth vector for Microsoft in certain markets and will help Microsoft stake a claim in the growing market. Kareem also helped shape Microsoft's growing AI efforts, which have a big focus on accelerating game development with an equally big focus on how to guarantee some ethical guardrails. Chowdhury's passion for Xbox tech and gaming in general is always apparent when I had opportunities to speak with them. From what I understand, and while I don't yet know the exact reasons, Chowdhury's departure was circumstantial and not part of Microsoft's wider reorg that kickstarted late last year. So who knows why he left and who knows where he is going or if he is going anywhere else. But this does seem like a pretty big loss for Xbox from the higher ups because he like this article outlies here. He was a part of some major points of Xbox, some major programs that, in my opinion, have all been pretty successful helping move that industry forward and giving us some some great tech just even you think about cloud and you think about just the xbox one x and the series x and then of course backwards compatibility so we'll see what this means and if there's gonna if you're gonna notice really any changes as a consumer as a gamer from xbox how they go about in the future with developing new programs for the platform but i will end the video there guys if you did enjoy this video make sure to hit that thumbs up if you are new here hit that subscribe and i will catch you guys in the next video